We're continuing the journey to Atlantis by Thea Silton, starting on page 190, which is the 33rd chapter. Mm -hmm. Atlas Speaks. The reunion of Paulina and the rest of the Thea sisters was full of hugs, but too rushed for them to catch up. Kelly opened a bag and produced full rain suits for all of them. They, then they all boarded the raft, and Pablo steered it right towards one of the waterfalls. <laughs> there's, one, there's one and one. Watch out, Violet yelled. We're going right into the water. Don't be scared, Pablo responded with a smile. I know the way. To the amazement of the Thea sisters, he scare, skillfully steered the raft under the waterfall to uh, the dry space between the stream of water and the rocky wall. Hmm. That's probably why they had to wear rain suits. Mm -hmm. How marvelous! Nikki exclaimed. Okay, and there's a picture over here. Let's see if I can get a good shot. It's them going behind the waterfall. Can you flatten it out? Remember? Yeah, that's them going behind the waterfall. Fall? Or fall now, I rattle. Okay. <laughs> Next, Pablo steered them through a secret passage in the rock wall. When they were set, and they were suddenly surrounded by darkness. Violet gave a frightened gasp, and Pam reached out and took her friend's paw. A ray of light soon lit up the passage, and Pablo docked next to a stone platform. Everyone got off the raft and took off their rain gear. Kelly led them to a smooth spot on the rock wall and pressed her paw on it. A secret door slid open. Wow. We're here, she announced. They followed her into an enormous room full of electronic equipment. Kelly confidently marched to a machine that had two seats with a clear helmet above each one. The posts holding, holding up the helmets were attached to a large computer monitor and a green wire connected the two helmets. Let's see what we can do, Kelly exclaimed. It exclaimed. It's hard to see unless you flatten it out. She told yes. Atlas to sit in one seat and Paulina to sit in the other. Then she lowered a helmet onto each one's head and switched on the machine. A blue light shined from the monitor and bounced off the ceiling. Kelly motioned for Atlas to say something. His musical voice filled the room. To everyone else, it sounded strange not to Paulina. With the helmet on, she could clearly understand as if Atlas were speaking in her language. Do you understand what I'm saying? Atlas asked her. Paulina shivered with excitement. It was so amazing to be able to communicate with her friend at last. Yes, she replied in a shaky voice. So when I say thank you for saving my life, do you understand me? Atlas asked. Paulina felt tears come to her eyes. Yes! The others watched in amazement. It looked like Paulina and Atlas could communicate. Atlas began to tell his story, and Paulina re repeated his tale for them. Atlas's story. The story of Prince Atlas. You already know my name, Atlas, and I already 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 know all your names. Without you all, I wouldn't be alive. So I shall tell you a story that I swore I would never tell anyone. But over these days, I've come to know you, and I trust you all. I come from a faraway land that sits deep in the ocean, Atlantis. I am the prince of Atlantis. My father is the king, and I will take his throne one day. <coughs> Excuse me. It is a happy and peaceful kingdom with a history thousands of years old. Legend has it that many centuries ago, our kingdom was on the surface of the water. On this lush island... My ancestors developed advanced technology and possessed great knowledge that allowed to them to live peacefully. Everyone prospered. One day, however, all of this changed and the waters of the sea swallowed our island. Much of it was destroyed, but the capital city, <coughs> excuse me, home to all of our most important buildings, was unharmed and sank to the bottom of the sea. Great crystal domes protected the capital city and the buildings, plants, animals, and people that lived inside. The domes kept the air in and kept the dangerous seawaters out. 
Our engineers found a way to bring down light to our ocean depths so that our plants could survive. The life cycle continued. The people got used to life in the underwater city and, over time, forgot the outside world. Paulina couldn't believe the story she was hearing. It was incredible. Ask him if he knows what caused the disaster, suggested Kelly. Paulina asked, but Atlas shook his head. My people tell many legends of what caused the, caused the catastrophe. Catastrophe? Catastrophe. Some say it was an earthquake or a comet, but only my father knows the secret truth. Every king learns the history on the day of his, what does that say? Coronation. What does that mean? Like when he became the king, the day he was crowned king. And he king. solemnly swears never to tell. And to think that here on the surface, we don't believe you exist, Kelly murmured. Paulina translated it, and the prince smiled. It is the same with us. In Atlantis, no one really believes that a world exists above the sea. Hmm. Instead, many believe that it never existed. My people think that there has never been another civil... civil Civilization. Civilization. Besides our own. Everyone was silent for a moment. Then Violet spoke up. Paulina, can you ask him how he washed up on the beach? She asked. <coughs> Excuse me. Atlas let out a sigh when he heard Paulina repeat the question. I didn't believe that the outside world was a legend. I even had some proof. What kind of proof? Paulina asked. In the Royal Library, there are ancient books that describe your world, but everyone thinks they are myths, or legends to be told to children. In fact, my sister and I heard them when we were young. You have a sister? Paulina asked. Atlas smiled tenderly and nodded. Astra! We both heard the stories, and I felt they were too detailed to have been made up. Growing up, my desire to uncover the truth behind the legends grew stronger and stronger. <coughs> I dreamed about leaving the kingdom and going exploring, but his voice trailed off. Everyone held their breath, waiting to hold the, hear the rest. Atlas closed his eyes for a moment, and then his melody, melodious... Mm-hmm voice filled the room once again. I am the heir to the throne. It is my duty 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 to 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 take care of my people. I should never have left them. I never should have left them. Yeah, just a minute. Okay, so you had the picture here and then there's a message, right? Let's see if you can see what it is before we... Can you figure out what that is? Before we put the... Okay. Okay, you're going to want to tip it down further. What's it say, Sienna? A royal library. Mm -hmm. okay. Paulina's voice trembled with emotion as she repeated Atlas's extraordinary confession to the others. My father didn't understand my desire to travel. He called me a dreamer and reminded me of my obla obligations. Obligations to my people. What does that mean? Obligations means uh, your what your responsibilities, what you're supposed to be doing. So I resigned. Resigned myself. Resigned myself to staying in the kingdom, and I buried my dreams deep within my heart. Colette gasped and grabs Pam's paw. What does that say? How something. Tragic. Tragic. The years passed oh, until my father decided it was time to hand me his th throne. Although he, I was young, he was tired of ruling. I was not happy with the decision, this decision, but I knew that I must obey him and ac accept my destiny. Then something happened, something I never expected. At the stopped. For an instant, he seemed lost in thought. Then he continued. A few days before my coronation, I met my father in the throne room. It, I was prepared to tell him that I would give up my dreams and become king. 
I thought he would take my words as a sign of maturity. But he stopped me from speaking and led me to a room in our palace I had never seen before. He said to me, My son, to be a true king, you must love above all the people in your kingdom. But you have a different love in your heart, a love of adventure. Until you slake this thirst, you will never be a good leader. So I give you my permission to leave and follow your dreams. Then he showed me an amazing watercraft made of metal and pearl. He told me in this vehicle I could leave Atlantis and travel to the surface. Okay, hang on. Okay, so here's a picture of his coronation, right? Oh, that's when he was supposed to. When he was come supposed king, to be king. was telling him he could go to mm -hmm. the outside Okay, world. so let's see if he can figure out what this says without the mirror first. Okay. What's it say? The royal palace. Mm -hmm. Okay, so travel to the surface. The Thea sisters were transfixed by the story. So you left, Cole remembered. Yes, leaving Atlantis and my loved ones was not easy, but I knew it was the right thing to do. The prince smiled and his eyes sparkled as he remembered the excitement he felt, but his expression turned sad. Just as I was about to leave, my mother began to cry, worried about what might happen to me. I had no idea what my future held, and it scared me a little. But more than anything, I wanted to explore, and that feeling was stronger than my fear. This was the only chance to make my dream come true, the dream I had that I had held in my heart for so long. I assured my mother that I would return and become the king she raised me to be. Okay, let's just look at the picture for a minute. See, he's gonna leave. Mm-hmm. What do you think that says? Benjamin, can you figure it out? Okay, let's use the mirror and find out. What's it say? The ocean door. The ocean door. Cool. It's a ship and he's going up to the surface. Okay, it's a double page. Just a second, let's look at the whole thing. And I'll zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Almost Then I got in the ship and never looked back. And what happened next? Pauline asked. At first, the trip was smooth. <coughs> Excuse me. The ship rode the currents, rising higher and higher through miles of water. I had only a vague, vague, vague idea of where to go, but trusted that sooner or later I would reach the surface of the sea. I had food and instruments with me. Instruments? Ooh. Maybe he's a musician. And a book that I had discovered on the shelves of a royal library. It was a travel diary, and on the very first page was a map that showed Atlantis linked to another continent. I knew the map could have come from the writer's imagination, but I had a feeling that it was real. The author's name was Anne... Antonio. Antonio. Antonio Voyager. Hmm. Voyager. He was a citizen of Atlantis, but he said he was that he was born in a city far, far away. Lisbon. 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 Pam exclaimed in disbelief. Disbelief. Lisbon isn't a legendary city. Violet well, said it's the capital of Portugal. Atlas began to nod energetically when he heard the translation. Yes, I have never heard of this Portugal, but it is obviously a real place, which means that Voyager's story was real too. <coughs> Excuse me. Using Voyager's map, I traveled far away from my kingdom. The water gradually changed color. Finally, I reached the surface. 
An explosion of light came over me, and I was astonished. I could see the sky and the clouds for the fir very first time. It was amazing. I sailed around for several hours, letting the waves carry me. <coughs> then night fell, and the, with the darkness came a terrible wind. The sea began to churn violently. The storm, Paulina realized. But then dazzling lights appeared in the sky, accompanied by loud, booming noises. The waves swirled around my ship. I fell into the water and began to sink, as if the water wanted me back in its depths. Luckily, a dolphin came to my rescue, and I grabbed his fin before I passed out. The prince gazed at Paulina. When I opened my eyes again, I saw you. Hmm. The Blue Current Kelly was stunned by Atlas's story. She had meant, spent many years at the IIS researching the Kingdom of Atlantis. She had longed to find proof that it existed and to pinpoint its location, but she had never succeeded. Now, right in front, yet now, right in front of her was living, breathing proof of a lost civilization. Did I get right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stories of Atlantis had thrilled researchers all over the world for centuries. She knew she would, that they would love to be in her shoes right now. But when Pablo had suggested that they immediately let people know about their discovery, she responded firmly, No, Pablo, it would be too dangerous. We need to protect Atlas and his kingdom from who would harm it, those who would harm it. She was thinking, of course, of Mr. Beta, Professor Kesar. She shuddered to think that he might have kidnapped Atlas. Many stories have talked about the precious metals and jewels in Atlantis. She knew that a greedy rodent like Mr. Be Be Beta. Beta would do anything to get his paws on them. <coughs> Atlas had still had more to say, so Paulina translated for him. I am so thankful to all of you for taking care of me. I couldn't have survived here without your help. I felt very weak ever since I set foot on land, and this is difficult for me to think. It is difficult for me to think. I believe that after so many centuries under the sea, the inhabitants, inhabitants mm -hmm. of Atlantis would have a hard time living in the outside world. The climate is a strain on us. So what do you want to do? Paulina asked. We want to help you. Atlas was thoughtful for a while. I would like to go back home. I want to see my parents and my sister again. Do you know how to get back? He shook his head. I lost my ship in the storm. And even if I did <coughs> have the ship, excuse me, I'm not sure if I could map my journey home. I need to find the blue current. Hmm. The blue current? Paulina asked. And... Antonio Voyager. Antonio? Mm -hmm. Antonio Voyager. It's a picture of him, apparently. <coughs> Excuse me. Antonio Voyager called it, or rather them, that. He wrote that there was there are several blue currents that run under the ocean surface. They cannot always be found, but when they are, they connect the surface to Atlantis. I followed one of these currents to the surface. Antonio Voyager described them correctly in his diary. But Antonio's diary, Paulina murmured apprehensively, mm -hmm. apprehensively, apprehensively, was lost in the storm with all of my things, confirmed Atlas, shaking his head. I'm curious, what am I to Antonio Voyager? Colette asked. He said he was born in Lisbon. 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 Yet he lived in Atlantis. How does his life end? No one knows for sure. Life in Atlantis made Voyager restless. His health was not very good, and he kept remembering Lisbon, Lisbon as a marvelous place. <laughs> so he wanted to return home, Paulina guessed. On the very last page of the diary, he said that he longed to return to 
Lisbon. He seemed ready to leave. I don't know how, how or when he left Atlantis, but I do remember how the diary ends. It's a picture of a tower. Everyone turned to look at Kelly, who shook her head. I don't know anything about an IIS connection to Voyager. The tower symbol might just be a kind of coincidence. There was a word under the tower, Atlas said. I don't know if the word was written in language, but the word was... Bellum. What does that say? I don't know. Bellum? Bellum. Bellum. Pauline repeated. That must be the book. Mm-hmm. The journal. Their diary. diary. Pauline repeated. Thea's sisters all looked at Violet, who is usually a walking encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In fact, well, it said, there is a tower in Lisbon with that name. Hmm. It was constructed by a king who supported explorations by land and sea. Atlas's eyes lit up with hope. So if Voyager was able to return home, Oops, sorry. he might have brought with him information about his trip. And if he didn't, asked Violet, then there would be no way for me to find the blue carrots and go home, Atlas said. Pam did not like seeing Atlas look so sad. Of course Voyager got home, she said confidently, and now we've got to follow his tracks. Pam's right, agreed Pauline. From what you've told us, it sounds like Antonio Voyager was a clever explorer, so I'm sure he found a way to return home. We should go to Lisbon and see if Voyager left anything behind, and he suggested. Violet looked thoughtful. We should also contact Thea. I believe she was studying marine currents during her trip on whale migration. Maybe she can help us. <coughs> Excuse me. Kelly disconnected the translation museum. Machine, not museum. <laughs> translation. The museum. Translation museum. <laughs> no, just kidding. Translation muse- machine. <laughs> so we have a plan. Pablo will take you to the airport and get you on a plane to Lisbon. I will return to the IIS and see what I can do from there. Perfect, agreed Paulina, although she was a little bit sad. She would miss using the machine to talk to Atlas, not easy a machine. Mm-hmm. The Thea sisters gave a cheer. Let's go! Lisbon awaits! Okay, bye Benjamin. See you next time.